2,915 pounds. Ultra popular little J Flight SLX, seven foot wide, 195 RB here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Uh, this has become an absolute staple of our diet here at Halet's for the uh, kind of, you know, awesome combination of walk around queen bed, small, lightweight, low profile, low stature, and low exterior height little couples camper that it is, with double the warranty of anything else you're going to find in this category or pretty much any other category. Something I really like and respect about this product and the brand managers behind the J-Flight is despite the wild success of this product, it is something that uh, they, they didn't just sit on their laurels and are just saying, listen, no, we've been the number one selling uh, trailer, well, uh, really any RV, fifth wheel travel trailer, anything since 2005. We're just going to sit there, guys. We're not going to change this Colonel's original recipe. They're not doing, they're constantly making smart, intelligent little updates. Like, they've uh, recently, at the time of this filming anyway, updated the countertops to a thermal foil sealed edge press membrane countertop. And these have really just taken over the RV industry as opposed to classic old T molding. And I'm, I'm very happy with it because it, it looks fantastic. And it just gives me a little bit more confidence. It's very, very hard to like damage that from water exposure. Now, um, this little thing, uh, not all campers in this category are going to have all LED lights. But one of the things that I like here, as you may have noticed, we have a light switch for it. Usually, little campers require you go click, 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 click all over the place to individually turn on lights. We don't have that challenge here. Um, the side mount air conditioner here. When these little single axle mini campers first came out, they had 5,000 BTU side mount airs and you could upgrade to an eight. And it didn't take Jake along to say, nope, we're just doing an 8K standard, which is way more than enough in uh, a little bitty box like this. One of the things I like about the side mount air is instead of being on top of the camper, it helps the overall exterior height of this camper stay lower. Um, you know, so it's just, it, there's a lot of people that have like a short garage door or something like that. You might still be able to fit this into your garage, which is, oh man, if you can keep this thing away from the sun for storage purposes, congratulations. You just saved yourself all the headache in the world. We do have a uh, curtain here for privacy across the master bed. If you are going to fold the dinette down into a little grandkid sleeper space, you do have the uh, ability to do that there. But it is really the walk around bed that makes this one. This began its life as the 185 RB, and it had an east west corner bed with a really a bunkhouse mattress under it. It didn't have a true, um, uh, you know, walk around bed like this one does. So this, when it when they went to this generation, the camper got slightly longer, but it got so much better. Now you don't have to crawl over each other to get to the bed at night if you need, or well, out of the bed at night to get to the bathroom, or I guess crawl over each other to get into bed if you're like, you know, my my wife and myself. I'm a night owl. She is not. Um, she's an awesome super mom, so uh, her sleep cycle's kind of synced with our kid going to school. I'm one of these people. I've just always stayed up late at night, so this works so much better for me than an east west bed. Now, little campers like this don't always have the dual hanging wardrobe closets. In some brands, it's actually optional. You will find it's standard here. What's also nice is your construction uh, complement here compared to the full-blown J-Flight. It's pretty much all the same. You've got the same pocket-screwed cabinetry. Um, they've recently updated their uh, cabinet hardware to this uh, brush nickel, nickel, like very shaker style looking cabinet hardware. Very modern and residential in that way. You'll see that all windows also have a nicer pleated shade as opposed to mini blinds. And they specifically went black this year because it actually blocks more sun and can give you more privacy and darker interiors. Like let's say you're having like a migraine day and you just really have to retreat. You're good. If you notice something here, we are completely carpetless. This camper is extremely easy to upkeep and keep clean, not just from the small size, but just the material selection. And we also have side stands on both sides of the bed with household outlets for CPAP users with large windows on both sides of the bed. And they all, with the exception of the front window, which is really just for light and viewing, all the uh, windows are going to open for breeze. Now that front window there, not all single axle campers have those. A lot of them do. And for good reason, because it makes this thing feel bigger, lighter, brighter, not quite so compact and condensed. Um, as I uh, flip around here, there's one thing I really want to point out that is, I, I don't know that a lot of other dealerships are going to take the, the time and effort to show you this. And that is the storage below the dinette. Both 
sides of the dinette bench have bonus storage between it and uh, well below them and tell me when too much storage is ever a thing you can never have too much storage that can also fold down into a little bonus sleeper now that's not really going to be a comfortable adult sleeper a little too small it's an ideal little grandkid sleeper and I do want to point out too something that a lot of brands will miss again is the power outlet below that table there um, now, in case you're wondering why is there that, like, box below the table, well, that's your wheel well. That's just kind of one of those necessary eels. This is a couple's camper. There is plenty of leg room for just a couple's dining situation. If you are going to try to squeeze four people in here, you're probably going to have to get a couple extra chairs and sit around the end of the table, and it's going to get kind of tight. Um, the uh, entertainment complement in this is very basic, but... I mean, this is, by intention, a more basic series camper. This is not a, you know, four seasons glamping fireplace ceiling fan, fifth wheel luxury living experience. It's just a little weekend camper, and it's something that's very easy to get around with, especially smaller capacity vehicles. Um, what is nice, though, is you do still have a, a no-crank TV antenna here. It's directional only, so um, you get greater range of reception and clarity there. Now, uh, you can see we've got the full storage up here, I talked about the dual hanging closets, I talked about the storage below there, but oh my goodness, look at this. This is probably like the biggest single cavity. This, this closet alone rivals the size of the bathroom. It is massive. And that extra shelf down there, like, you're like, why is he wasting time talking about an extra shelf? Having an extra shelf to kind of customize your storage space while still having like a shoe garage below that guys it is mastery and execution that a lot of folks are going to very easily miss before we get to the bathroom which is nice i do want to take a moment to look through the kitchen because you know another thing this does very well is storage um this is very similar to uh, a sister product that jayco makes um the uh the the starcraft ar1 and there's nothing wrong with that product but it lacks, it, it's slightly shorter, but it lacks this kind of storage. They, they, had to, uh, they had to really make too many sacrifices, I feel, to be able to achieve that kind of storage in the product. Now down here, I love what they did here because it's the perfect little wastebasket space and there is a little shelf above it. So, you know, little campers like this, they don't usually consider where could I put a wastebasket, but Jayco does. Now, I like the fact that they gave you this nice open chunk of real estate right here. So uh, if you notice, you've actually got TV hookups right there. If you want to throw a TV on, you can. Now, one of the benefits, uh, a lot of people seem to think that aluminum stud construction in the walls is just better. It's not better, it's different. One of the advantages to this style construction is that statistically every 16 inches on center, I've got a wall stud. And I can mount like a wall mount TV right there. And there's my cable hookup so that I can have, if I want to get that TV out of the way and use my prep space, I can. Or you could just throw a TV right there on the countertop if you're interested, if you're even planning on bringing a TV with you, which I found almost nobody with these little campers does. Now this down here, this gas electric refrigerator freezer, it also, well, it, I just kind of gave it away with the name. It's gas electric fridge, but it does have a freezer pocket in it. It's not massive. You want to keep some ice cream sandwiches or a bag of ice or something with you, you're going to be good to go. I already talked about the air. I'm just doing a quick recap. Pardon me. Oh, the, the vent right here, well, the stovetop hood, it actually does vent. It does exhaust heat outside. So especially in a tiny box like this, these burners will make a very uh, quick impact on the overall heat uh, in the camper. That's why this vents outside, and that's why you have this sort of dual-purpose skylight and ceiling vent up top here because heat rises, and organically what's going to happen is uh, outside air will pull in from the side windows and it will exhaust out the hot air through the ceiling and kind of have that constant recycling, uh, comfortable air flow. Um, a couple quick things. People ask all the time, what are those black things down there? This is your furnace, and that is your um, converter box at your house. You probably call it like your fuse panel. That's where all your like uh, fuses are. Now, I think one of the reasons that this product became just so successful so quickly, close to five years ago now, really, is that at the time, uh, everybody who was building single axle mini campers, they had what's called a wet bath. And that's where the toilet is in the shower, like a closet. You've probably seen those. Well, Jayco went, no, 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 no. That, that's not how we do business here. We're going to have a skylight and uh, the vent up here, and we're going to have separate toilet and shower with leg room and a foot flush because that's what we do that's how we became uh the number one selling rv on the planet for what how many years since 2005 now 
So very little inside has changed other than just those countertops. There are a couple pretty significant uh, exterior changes. One in particular I do want to talk about as we step outside. I mentioned it earlier, but one of the first things to talk about on any Jayco, really, is the fact that they have twice the full camper warranty. Now there is no such thing as a three-year RV warranty. There are three-year limited structural warranties, and some of them are pretty good, like Keystones is the most comprehensive in the industry covering more things. Um, but it doesn't cover expensive stuff like air conditioners, like water heaters, like electrical systems, etc. Whereas Jayco's full warranty will. What's actually kind of cool, they have so much confidence in their product, and their engineers do so much testing at Jayco. Um, I'm just going to make up a hypothetical. Let's say hypothetically, the uh, the power awning. Let's say that that manufacturer only gives it a one-year warranty or the microwave. Well, Jayco says, I don't care. I put it in my camper. I'm going to cover it for two years. And there are exactly zero other manufacturers that will offer more coverage than the actual manufacturer of the good or appliance themselves. They can do that because they have more testing down at Jayco. Now, this is a narrow body, easy towing, low ride and low profile little sucker. So if you're worried about headwinds, you have a reduced capacity vehicle, or again, with that side mount air, we have a lower exterior height than uh, a roof mount air unit uh, in a comparable category would have. Um, that front window with the weather shield up there is doing a great job of giving us more light and a uh, sense of space inside because something I believe, this is nerdism number 37, lighter is brighter, brighter is bigger, and bigger is better. That's just how we tend to think in America and I think that's just probably how we tend to wired mostly as humans, but I wouldn't know as just an American human. Anyway, um, diamond plate up front. A lot of little campers like this lack the diamond plate. Um, another neat thing that you don't really consciously notice without a lot of training anyway, is that all Jayco trailers, even this little guy, ride on custom engineered chassis. They spend more time, effort, and money engineering the chassis under every single Jayco versus pretty much anything else in their class. Um, every chassis is custom cambered to meet the load demands of that specific floor plan. And look how short this little bugger is here. You're going to tow this no problem. Now, here's a neat thing, and here's the best in class thing, and it's pretty much best in industry, despite this being what you would often refer to as a small, inexpensive, entry-level camper. Goodyear endurance radials and galvanized steel wheel wells. So not only are we using a better tire uh, that is uh, rated for up to 87 mile an hour, so it's rated for more than you should ever be towing this thing, but God forbid you catch some kind of road debris, because no matter what brand of tire we have on here, it is possible for anything to fail if it's punctured. They still put uh, a blowout guard on here to hopefully give you that extra shield you need to get this thing down uh, from, you know, speeds to be able to get it fixed. Here's another, ooh, I just bumped my head on the Jayco tail in here behind me. How you doing, toy hauler? Anyway. <laughs> That'll go on the highlight reel. Oh, where was I at? I knocked I knocked my thoughts right out of my head. LED lighting, that's where I was at. So, this has all LED tail and marker lights and, and interior lights. And that's not normal. Not only just in this class and category, but even luxury fifth wheels are not still LED lights across the board. Some of them lack that feature. Now, your Jayco's all will but your Jayco's were a little more safety conscious that way. What's kind of cool, like LED taillights, because they flash faster than incandescent bulbs, um, at highway speeds at 60 mile an hour, it'll give the guy behind you up to five feet of additional stopping time because they can see your lights faster and register them mentally quicker. Five feet doesn't sound like a lot, but we have all had that situation where you glance down at the radio in your car and you look up and buddy, there's brake lights in front of you and you're like, Arr! well, Five feet can make a difference because we've all come that close to the bumper in front of us or, you know, maybe had a little bender. Here's another neat thing. The Jayco Smart Lighting System that originally debuted on Eagle Fifth Wheels last year has made its way through the Jayco family even here on a seven foot wide price leading uh, J Flight SLX camper. What that means, it stands for Signals, Markers and Reverse Travel. Uh, basically, the lights on this trailer will mirror exactly what your vehicle does. And I don't just mean having marker lights and brake lights. If you flip on your right turn signal, all of the clearance lights and upper lights uh, on the back will blink along with that for additional visibility and safety. This is not new technology. This has existed on tractor trailers forever. But Jayco was the first manufacturer to implement that across the board. Well, they were the first one to implement it in the industry, period. Now, quick 
clarification. This is one of the very first 2019 models to have been produced. This was built slightly before the smart lighting system is implemented for 2019 models. It's going to be something of a very, very early 2019 update. And there's an extreme likelihood that this is the only one of those campers that will be uh, built here at our dealership lacking that feature. I always want to go above and beyond out of the way for the sake of ultra clarity so that you folks at home know exactly what you're buying and not buying. So if that's something you're a little concerned about, feel free to give our team a call here because again, other than this one camper in this video, basically anything else uh, that's a copy of this uh, will have the smart lighting system later on this year. It proved very successful and very popular and the Eagle Sears and Jayco said we're doing it across the board. Um, that was the major update on the exterior I wanted to talk about. The other uh, neat little minor update is they've upgraded the awning. So this is a power awning with full length LED lighting. It is also easy tilt arms. Hold on, let me back up here. Take a look at this. Look at how easy it is to operate the awning on this J flight. Literally two fingers, you can pull the awning down, crank it onto an angle, and uh, it'll stay that way for you. And you can actually do it on both sides. Now what's also cool is, uh, let's say that you forgot that the awning's cranked down and you push the power bon uh, awning button inside to close it. Well, no big deal, because it'll self-correct. It's not going to damage itself. Little detail thing, guys. The windows, they don't just open for airflow. They're also tinted. Now remember how we were inside the camper? We could see outside like nobody's business. You can't see inside here. Now not only is that helping privacy, and I apologize if the wind is hitting the camera, it's not just for privacy, but it also, if we can't see in, that means really the sun kind of can't see in. So it's going to give you a cooler interior and drastically arrest uh, potential like furniture fade. Now, you are noticing that there's no exterior speakers here. That's because they're in the awning. The reason they do that is when the awning is open, it'll make the speakers point down to your campsite instead of sideways at your neighbor's campsite where they don't appreciate your loud music. Now, we already saw the, the big pass-through store, well, not full pass-through, pardon me, but the big storage compartment, both under the master bed as well as through that extra wide, extra tall door there for ease of access. This is a dynamite package, guys. There are so many reasons this has just been insanely popular and the most popular brand of RV ever conceived for 14 straight years. 15 now? I don't know, since 2005. It's pretty awesome. If you would like to see what it takes to take one of these home, we do everything here at Halitz, hitching pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, and everything in between, but we do not do hidden dealer fees. We don't engage in that sort of business. So if that sounds nice, fun, easy, fair, enjoyable to you, if you want to put the recreation in recreational vehicles, all I ask, if you found this video useful, is to give our team a call. I don't care where you live, we make deals happen. The only, like a lot of people say, well, you're, you're kind of far away. You know, you're too far away for us to do business with you. How do you know that? How do you know that unless you call? The only thing you stand to lose by not calling is hundreds or maybe thousands of dollars. If you want to make sure you got the right deal, you give our team a call, give our guys the opportunity to assist you and do their job, you might find out why we're the largest independent RV dealer in the state of Michigan. So with that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Look forward to hearing from you soon.